Welcome to part four of lecture two of block body aerodynamics. So now that we understand how to do wind tunnel testing at either full or model scale by non using non-dimensional parameters to ensure dynamic similarity, we can return to our integral momentum approach and add in friction to consider how we calculate drag on a car in a wind tunnel. So remember the integral form of the momentum equation, and now we'll add a new term, this final term, um, which is really the friction, and it comes from the velocity gradients along, around the surface of the control volume. So the easiest approach, whenever possible, is to choose the control volume boundaries at locations where we know that the velocity gradient, or at least the velocity gradient um, sort of normal to the boundary, uh, is zero. So if we want to apply integral momentum to compute drag on a car, here's sort of how we could go about doing it. So we would choose our control volume. Here I've just notionally shown this as this blue dotted, uh, dashed box. And this defines the surfaces where we're going to measure velocity and pressure. And if we've got this uh, a properly set up wind tunnel for a car, we would have a, moving, a section of moving floor that's moving at the same velocity as the incoming air. And we would sort of remove the tunnel boundary layer just before and re-add it back in just after to maintain mass conservation. We, we would use a very tall wind tunnel to ensure uh, that the velocity and pressure on the top are the free stream. And of course, in 3D, this would also mean that on the sides, we would need to be very far away from our object too. Right, so essentially, if the top surface here, uh, thinking just in 2D, is far away from the car, um, but still outside the top wall boundary layer, then essentially free stream conditions will prevail there. The reason we want to remove the boundary layer just before we get to the moving floor section is to yield a highly uniform incoming flow. Um, this takes some calibration, but we can suck off some of that boundary layer and yield a very uniform flow at speed V that will have uniform static pressure which is a value that we'll need to measure what that static pressure is at the inlet to our control volume. Since both the flow and the floor are moving at the same speed, there's very little uh, effects of friction along that bottom surface, and we, we can essentially neglect uh, that contribution. And again, if our downstream, on our downstream surface, we'll measure the pressure and the velocity. And if that downstream surface is far away, friction effects will be very small on that surface and can be neglected. That means that we can simplify our integral momentum equation. Um, the additional surface area we haven't covered is the car surface. There's a mix of pressure and friction forces there, but their net combined effect in the horizontal direction is drag. So it's not important to divide it up. So we could just say that over all of the in and outflow surfaces, we need to account for momentum flux. Uh, and there's no friction on those surfaces because the gradients are essentially zero there. And then we um, integrate the pressure over all the surfaces but the car. Um, we don't need to know the pressure on the bottom surface because that contributes purely in the vertical direction and therefore doesn't affect drag. Um, plus the force on the car is equal to zero. So basically, we need to measure the pressure and velocity upstream and downstream, and from that, we can compute the drag. So let's do an example. We'll do a 2D uh, flow example of computing the drag coefficient for a car. The numbers aren't perfect, but they give us a rough idea of uh, the sort of thing that we'd be dealing with. So we've got a full-scale car that's placed in a wind tunnel with a moving road surface. The road surface and the incoming air both move at U infinity equals 100 kilometers an hour. We've got standard room temperature for our conditions. We remove the tunnel floor boundary layer uh, just before the moving road section, so the incoming velocity is perfectly uniform, and the pressure there is 101 kilopascals. Downstream of the car, the pressure is found again to be uniform, and it's equal to 100.9 kilopascals. And the velocity profile is a simple step with 80 kilometers an hour velocity for the first one and a half meters of height up from the floor 
and then a constant value above that which we'll need to determine for another one meter before the velocity then returns to be u infinity and the total and inlet, uh, inlet and outlet areas of the control volume reach five meters high so that 1.5 meter plus one meter is half of the height and we'll use our car frontal area to be one and a half meters and my, my areas have units of length here because it's a 2d problem So I'm actually going to go ahead and work out the solution to this problem by hand now. Um, and a completed version of this solution is posted on uh, the Blackboard site as a PDF. So let's begin to work through this. So we'll start by, here's our car on the floor of our control volume. And perhaps here's our control volume. So we'll call this surface plane 1, this surface plane 2. And we want the drag D on the car. So P1 is 101 kilopascals. And P2 is 100.9 kilopascals. This total height we'll call A, and that's equal to our 5 meters. And the velocity here is U infinity. On the downstream side, we have the following velocity profile. Uh, there's the midpoint, and there's that. So we've got um, 80 kilometers an hour here, 0 0.8 U infinity some value called x u infinity that we need to determine in this region and then a velocity profile that's uniform and equal to u infinity above that and here it's uniform over that entire range so you can imagine the top half sort of the flow is all uniform so we don't really have to worry about it so if we first start by just writing down conservation of mass in order to figure out what this velocity uh, fraction downstream is. On the upstream side, we have uh, the area times u infinity. And on the downstream side, we have, sorry, this height is 1.5, this height is 1, and this height is 2.5. Um, and these are all can be normalized by the total height. So um, this is, for the first part, it's the height is 1.5 over 5 times a, and the velocity there is 0 0.8 u infinity. Then the next part, we have 1 over 5 times a, times x u infinity, and then the last part, 2.5 over 5a u infinity. So the only unknown here is x, so we can solve this equation for x. First of all, we can cancel out a from all of the terms, and we get u infinity equals 1.5 divided by 5 is 0.3, 0 0.3 times 0 0.8 u infinity plus 0.2 x u infinity plus 0.5 u infinity. So we can gather the terms where we know the coefficients and move them to the right-hand side of the equation and subtract them from the implied coefficient of 1 here, um, and we'll get 1 minus 0.3 times 0.8 minus 0.5, not 0 0.26, so 0 0.26 u infinity 
equals 0.2x u infinity. You can cancel out the u infinities, and we get x is 0.26 divided by 0.2, which is 1.3. So that means that in this region, the velocity is 130 kilometers an hour. So now let's move on and look at the x-momentum equation. I'll try to build this up slowly to make it clear what's going on. We're gonna, we don't need to worry about the top or bottom of the control volume because there's no flow across either of those surfaces. And any contributions there are going to be in the vertical direction from pressure. And those won't have any impact on the drag force, which is in the horizontal direction. So we're just going to have to worry about this front surface and the back surface. Let's take the sign convention that things going this way are negative completely arbitrary and we could choose the sign convention to be whatever we want. So then if I look at what's happening on plane one at the entrance to my control volume, the flow is coming in at infinity. The momentum being carried in is negative rho u infinity. And this acts over area A. On that surface, there's also pressure acting. The pressure always acts inward on the control volume. So we have minus P1 times A. Plus, now the term's acting on this side. Now here, the velocity is not uniform, so we're going to have to build up a picture of what's going on with the velocity. So there's three different values, so we'll have three terms. So let's put this all in a bracket because it all corresponds to the momentum leaving the control volume. These are weaving. Um, so one, one sort of trick with, with momentum is yes, uh, the flow is this direction, but it's also um, in the opposite direction in terms of whether it's weaving or entering. So it's going to end up having the opposite sign as these terms. Um, so these terms will be positive. That's going to be the density rho times the velocity, which is 0 0.8 u infinity squared. Um, right, we see that we end up just always with a term that's like density times velocity squared. And the area that this acts on is, again, um, we already calculated that, 0 0.3 a plus rho 1.3 u infinity squared times uh, the height there is 0 0.2a plus rho u infinity squared times 0 0.5. So that's the momentum leaving the control volume, and we've got a pressure term which acts in the opposite direction, so it's plus P2A. And then finally, we have the drag, which is in the uh, our negative sign direction, so minus drag equals zero. If you're not sure about the sign on this drag, it's not a huge deal. You could make this positive, and at the end of the day, you'd end up with a negative force coefficient. And since you know you're supposed to be getting drag, if you get a negative force coefficient, clearly it just means that you, you assigned it the wrong sign. So it's pretty easy to fix that at the end. Otherwise, this wouldn't really change anything. So the first thing I'm going to do is move the drag to the other side of the equation and divide every term by A. So I'm going to write this as D over A equals. And I'm going to get negative rho u infinity squared minus p1 plus p2 plus 
last row. And let's get the contribution from this first term. 1 point, uh, 0.8 squared times 0.3. So this is 0 0.192 u infinity squared plus rho. Let's get the contribution from the second term, 1.3 squared times 0 0.2, 0 0.338 u infinity squared plus 0 0.5 u infinity squared. If we group all of the coefficients that have to do with u infinity squared, we're going to get rho, and let's just do that. So it's negative 1 plus 0 0.192 plus 0 0.38 plus 0 0.5. That's 0 0.03. So this is 0 0.03 u infinity squared minus p1 minus p2. And I've just made this a pressure difference by putting the bracket around it, so this is equivalent to minus p1 plus p2, which is what we have here. So this is starting to look a little bit more manageable. Next, let's, non let's further get towards uh, a non-dimensional form of drag over here, since at the end of the day we're interested in the drag coefficient. It's not quite going to be the drag coefficient yet, but it's going to be close. What we're going to do is take this and go 1 half rho u infinity squared a. So that means we're going to divide all terms by 1 half rho u infinity squared. So when I take this and divide by 1 half rho u infinity squared, I'm going to get just 0 0.06. And then over here, I'll get minus p1 minus p2 over 1 half rho u infinity squared. So what we can see already is there's two contributions to the drag coefficient. There's a part associated with the, the change in momentum uh, flux, and there's a part associated with the pressure change. We have all the numbers here, so we can put this in. So this is 0 0.06 minus P1 was 101 kilopascals, P2 is 100.9. Those are kilopascals, so we multiply by 1,000. At standard pressure and temperature, the density will be 1.225 kilograms per meter cubed. And 100 kilometers an hour, which is our velocity, the factor is 3.6 to get that in meters a second. So this is 27.8 squared. And if I evaluate that, Oops, I must have made a mistake somewhere along the way here. This is uh, meant to be a plus. Oh, no, it's not. Um, <laughs> So uh, once again, I, I've tried to tweak the numbers in this problem and uh, seem to have made a small area. And it doesn't matter for the technique, but it's going to give us a silly answer. Um, what we're going to see here is that this term is positive, and this term is going to end up being uh, negative, um, which means we're going to have negative drag. Um, obviously, this is not going to be a physically realistic answer, but it still illustrates the technique perfectly well. So we're going to end up with negative 0 0.152. Um, so this is, first of all, this is a small drag coefficient, um, but we're not quite done turning this into a drag coefficient yet. So let's just do that last step. So we have d over 1 half 
rho u infinity squared a is now negative 0 0.152. Now, again, this is silly that this is negative, but it doesn't matter for the purpose of illustrating the technique. What we want is CD, and CD is defined to be the drag over one half rho u infinity squared AS, the frontal area. So that means we need to take what we have now and multiply by A over AS. So we take our negative 0 0.152, multiply by A over AS. This is 5 divided by 1.5, based on the given numbers, times 5 divided by 1.5. And we get a drag coefficient of negative 0 0.505. So in terms of a value for the drag coefficient, this is actually pretty reasonable. Um, but what's not reasonable is that it's negative. Um, this ought to be positive. Um, so I will, uh, I actually didn't get this answer in the, the PDF I posted because I think I made a sign error. So I'll fix that and, uh, and post an updated version and also double check the signage here, um, but uh, the signs here to make sure everything's right. But I think this is correct. Of course, this tells us that this is a very silly answer. Um, and the reason um, and now that I look at this, is that indeed um, what we would I expect is that in the region where the uh, velocity is uh, not uniform yet downstream of the body, uh, we, we wouldn't really expect to see a, a decrease in pressure, or if we did, it must have to be a smaller decrease in pressure. So that's the end of part four.